Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Daniel Mendez. I'm one of the elders at the Rock Christian Church in Fontana. And in today's uh, Stay Connected series, I'd like to share on God's comfort. I'm gonna read uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter one, beginning with verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation or comfort also abounds through Christ Jesus. So when you think of the word comfort, uh, to see the word, what do you think about? You know, I imagine a, a kind word, maybe a, an embrace, a hug, uh, because comforting many times eases pain or constraint, uh, a time of uh, a grief or distress. It, it's, uh, it consoles, it consoles the heart. So we need to be comforted. As we just read, the word tells us that the Lord is the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. There's no greater comfort, it really is, than the Lord. You know, whatever trials, or tribulations, or grief in our lives, He's there. And uh, many times, uh, it may not be our own grief, maybe somebody else's, and uh, we want to be there to comfort, we want to uh, give a call, make a visit, share a word or a prayer, just to comfort somebody else and uh, the beautiful thing is that the comfort that we are comforted with from God is the same comfort that we can also comfort others as we read in uh, verse 4 who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Praise God. So what does that mean? It means that God, who is a father of all comforts and mercy, gives us an awareness of what comfort is because he brings that in our lives. And because we feel that in our lives, when we know that somebody is in distress, somebody is grieving, somebody needs a kind word, we're able to pass that on with that same comfort that God has given us. In verse 5, it tells us, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation or comfort also abounds through Christ. So what does that mean? It means as children of God, we are persecuted, even as Christ was persecuted. It says here, for as the sufferings of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. That's what Jesus told Saul when he met him on the road to Damascus. He said to Saul in Acts 9, verse 4, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, in verse 5. So, we know that Paul was persecuting the church. And thank God that he was transformed from the apostle, from Saul, to the apostle Paul. And he became a great and mighty man of God. So as we read this, we know that through Christ's sufferings, through his persecutions, 
we ourselves are going to go through persecutions in life and we need for that comfort of God to abound in us, to strengthen us, to see us through different things in life. You know, today we we hear and we see uh, on a newscast the sufferings of the people in Ukraine. You know, it's, it's so sad and heart-wrenching. We see so much suffering, so much persecuting, and many of them are, are Christians. And we continue to pray for all the men, women, and children, as well as for the president, who has shown great strength, great resilience. You know, uh, they're up against one of the strongest armies, militaries in the world. And look at them, they still stand. You know, they're, they're facing those things, but God is with them. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. The strength is from God. It's not of our own. We are the earthen vessels. And what is that treasure that is in the earthen vessels? It tells us right here, it's the power of God and not of us. The sufferings that people are going through, their strength, their resilience is coming from above because God is watching over them. Although they face, uh, like we read in uh, David and Goliath, really, but Goliath being the army of, of the military of Russia. The Ukraine, Ukrainians are a small, small army. Yet they're standing up to this mighty army that's come against them. So we are the earthen vessels, but the treasure in us is the power of God. It says in verse 8, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You know, many towns in Ukraine are being destroyed. They're surrounded all around by the enemy, yet they keep fighting. Hard pressed, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. They're perplexed because they don't always have the answers. You know, they've had about two million people that have left Ukraine. They have fled the country. And you can't even imagine the numbers of women and children because the, the men who are of a military age need to stay be, behind. And they're being separated from their families. But over two million refugees going into Poland and other countries. But yet, they're heart-pressed, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Is God. So they keep going forward when the enemy comes. In John 10:10, 10, 10, the Word of God tells us, "The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly." So the enemy comes, that's a picture of the devil, to steal, to kill, and destroy. And many towns in Ukraine are being destroyed completely. Their buildings have turned to rubble. You know, they've got, they're going to have so much to rebuild. But the precious lives that are being saved, yes, lives have been lost. But God is watching over. There's many prayers that are going. They need supplies of physical things, but prayer availeth much. We need to continue to pray for the nation of Ukraine, the country 
of Ukraine. We read in uh, verse 9, also it's in Corinthians chapter 4. They are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Not forsaken. God will never forsake his people. Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So our prayers are for comfort and strength for the people that are being persecuted, for the people that are suffering, for the people that are going through hardship. It's not easy. And when we sense also in our areas, our communities, our church, someone suffering, someone through going through a difficult time, we are the earthen vessels with that treasure that comes from God. Earthen earthen vessels to be a strength for God, to be a source of strength that in spite of our own troubles, in spite of our own difficulties, there is someone who's going through a much more difficult time. And as we comfort others, we ourselves are comforted. Because that's what the word said. When we're comforted by God, with that same comfort, we can comfort others. And that's really what God wants us to do. And uh, to continue praying for those going through difficulty. So what does God want us to do in these last days? He wants us to be watchful. He wants us to comfort one another. I'm going to read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Beginning with verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober, be awake. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and is a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Christ our Lord, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. In other words, all the time. All the time we should live together with him. And then it says here in verse 11, Therefore, Comfort each other and edify, build up, encourage, comfort one another, just as you also are doing. So we continue to do that by the comfort of God. You know, yesterday I went to a uh, funeral for my niece, my sister Dora's daughter. She passed away, there was much, much expectation that she would come home after her surgery. And uh, God answered the prayer, she went home to heaven, healed. But there was grief, mourning, and sorrow. And that's where the comfort of God came in, to comfort the family, to comfort my niece and sisters, her brother, all the family members her son, her daughter, grandchildren. So many of us were there to comfort, to be there. So it was a time of grief, but there was a time of comfort and encouragement. But it only comes through God. It comes through His strength. Like the word says, His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So brothers and sisters, God wants to use us to look at other situations, others' circumstances, and be ready to comfort. Be ready for an encouraging word, a good word, even an embrace in the Lord. And I just pray that God opens more doors for each and every one of us, that we can continue to be those earthen vessels for God, that by His strength, we will not be crushed or destroyed, but we will carry on. And we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. We thank you.
In Jesus' name. Amen.